In today's session, we are going to dive deep into application security testing and OWASP top 10. If you're new to application security, I recommend watching my previous video, which provides an introduction to application security testing. You can find the link in the description of this video. Let's get started. As I mentioned in my previous session, TAST is a dynamic form of testing in that it is carried out in a live environment. When I say live, it could be testing or a simulated environment. And the reason I highlight this is because any form of testing, be it security, functional or performance testing, is never carried out in a production environment. A broad environment is made available only to end users. We as testers shouldn't be touching a broad environment at all for the sake of not breaking anything functional. As you learn through these sessions, I would also want to pass a disclaimer. Do not try to execute anything that you learn in these sessions on the internet. For you to gain hands-on experience, we will provide you with a specific list of online, online applications that you are allowed to interact with when we cover tooling and hands-on videos. For now, just focus on understanding the foundational concepts taught in these sessions. Now, when you perform a dynamic testing, you will actually be providing values to the various input fields in your target application and examine the output carefully. Now, the input fields don't just limit to text boxes, drop downs, and similar HTML objects that you see in an application page. But when it comes to security testing, input field can be anything that accepts a value directly or indirectly. Now, these could be text boxes, for example, username and password fields, could be drop downs that allows you to select from a list of values that is already supplied. It could be check boxes that in turn translate to a true or false, false value when transmitting data to web server. It could also be header values in the application, for example, cookies, session IDs, etc. Now, when I say header values, there is a distinct difference between request header values and response header values. What I'm referring to here is the request header values. And this could also be query parameters that are usually supplied in the URL. Now, you heard me mention a few seconds ago input fields that directly or indirectly accept values. Let's understand a bit more about these terms. Now, input fields that directly accept values are the ones that you see and supply a value in your application pages. So these are the input fields that you see in the front end. So here is a rough list. We have text box, comment box, search bar, query parameter. Now, you very well know the first three in this list accept values. Query parameter allows you to key in a value directly in the URL. Moving on to the indirect fields of values, we have check boxes, time and date fields, language fields, request header values, and we also have buttons, for example, reset, submit, etc. Now, these indirect fields can be tampered or modified using what we call a proxy tool. A proxy tool sits in between your application and the web server. So, to make it even more clear for you, it sits between your browser where you access your application from and the web server. Now, what a proxy tool usually does is intercept the values that you submit in the application page in the front end and holds it for you to make any modifications before submission to the web server. And in the process of holding it up, it also holds and allows you to modify the values indirectly for the fields, even if you're not able to do it from the front end. Now, you can relate proxying with debugging as in the case of a software developer. So when a software developer runs a debugger, he is actually looking to accurately capture the application behavior line by line for a supplied input. Similarly, with security testing, proxy tools allow you to not only hold but also modify values to see how an application behaves for each and every request. Now, a few proxy tools that I can call out as it applies to web application security are Paros, Fiddler, Burbsuit, etc. Now, we will learn more about proxies when we get to the tooling sessions. Now, let's get next to OWASP top 10, which is the core for web application security testing. Again, if you want to know the basics of standards and why OWASP top 10 applies to web application, go watch my other session on application security testing, the link to which is given in the description. Okay. OWASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project and is a non-profit organization that provides standard and best practices for security testing. 
OBAS top 10 includes a broad category of 10 vulnerabilities that you will test your application against. The recent list of OBAS top 10 from the year 2021 is given below. Now OWASP revises this list once in a few years to stay relevant and to bump up vulnerabilities up in the list per recent statistics. However, the base framework as it was initially written down remains. We can easily get a comparison of OWASP year after year just by looking, it, looking for it in the internet. So for example, a comparison of OWASP top 10 2013 and 2017 is given below. Now, Instead of sticking to a particular version of OWASP, I want to give you maybe a radical list based on the fundamentals for the purpose of testing and here it is. So we have injection, cross-site scripting, broken authentication and session management, insecure direct object reference, cross-site request forgery, security misconfiguration, failure to restrict URL access, unvalidated redirects and forwards, insecure deserialization using components with known vulnerabilities. Now, some of these can be split down further, but injection has the most subclasses. So let's break injection and cross-site scripting for today's learning. So injection can further be broken down into SQL injection, LDAP injection, OS command injection, XML injection, XPath injection, process injection, external entity injection, expression language injection, CRLF injection, etc. And further down, SQL injection can still be broken down into second order SQL injection, blind SQL injection, time based SQL injection, and error based SQL injection. And cross site scripting can be broken down into stored, reflected, and top-based. Technically, each one of the items listed here, say for example, injection, ex XSS, etc., is a class of vulnerability, which means there could be multiple vulnerabilities or subclasses within itself. So when you, when you conduct security testing, you will actually be looking for a specific vulnerability than a class in itself and map the finding back to the class to provide a be better picture. In the upcoming sessions, we will learn each vulnerability in detail and also understand different ways to identify a vulnerability while conducting dynamic testing through manual or automated means all the way to hands-on and live demos. Hope these sessions are useful to you. Keep watching.